Alright, so today I have a special treat for you guys. Today we have a special guest on the channel. We have Ian Bauer with us. So he is a marketing expert and we thought it would be a great idea to fuse this hacking technology concept. So basically, how you can use marketing to position yourself as a trusted source and then look into how this can be like when we sell the website. So very, very exciting indeed. Alright, so let's watch this video. Okay guys, so welcome to this special episode today. We have a special guest on the channel. We have Ian Bauer. So he's a marketing genius and he's the owner at Graphic Rhythm, a design agency based in Pennsylvania and is soft clients worldwide. And today he's going to talk to us about the hacking authority concept. So he's going to tell us how by having a premium visual identity, you can hack authority, increase consumer confidence and position yourself as a safe, and trusted source. So very exciting indeed, and we're definitely looking forward to hearing all about it. So Ian, we all yes. Hey there, thanks for having me on. Uh, so this idea of hacking authority through graphic design is basically linked to the concept that people already understand, which is kind of, I, and I hate to say it like this, fake it until you make it kind of concept. Um, now, of course, you never want to be deceptive or anything like that, but there's a strong inclination to put trust into brands that look really good. And this is borne out by a lot of research, actually. Adobe did a state of create report, uh, I think it was for 2017, where one of the principal findings of the report was that people, consumers will spend more money with brands that are well designed. Um, and then as recently as this week, I was reading an article on medium that was discussing this idea of attractiveness bias and how essentially that there is this deep rooted preference for all things that are attractive now this study was focused uh, on human characteristics you know attractive people and it was demonstrating how attractive people are perceived as more trusting trusted and uh, liked and uh, can basically get away with murder uh, and in fact that that uh, a st one study showed that um people who were perceived as unattractive were sentenced uh, something like 150 to 200 times longer prison sentences uh, than people who were perceived as attractive. So the whole, yeah, it's an interesting concept, but it, it lends credence to this idea that being attractive and presenting yourself as attractive uh, will increase the confidence of your customer, right? Um, and so we feel that the, you know, obviously we're a design agency and the best way to do that is through a strong visual identity. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, it, there was a time where if uh, somebody had asked me and said something like, hey, I'm just starting out my business and I need to know, should I like spend a lot of money on a logo and visual identity guide or anything like that? I would have said no. I would have said, you know, just go out there and kind of kick the tires a little bit. And, you know, if it sticks, then maybe do it right. And I've reevaluated that advice because uh, because of this concept of hacking authority, where essentially if you if you do it, then you're going to have a bigger kickstart. You're going to be able to compete with people who have more resources than you or more money than you because you're going to be presenting yourself as you visually as you know an an equal in there in that space. Yeah, that's interesting indeed. Uh, so. Um, you know, the way to go about this, of course, is, you know, first of all, we look at a logo uh, and a lot of people have a tendency to try and uh, make their logo on their own, which I don't really recommend. Um, one of the principal ideas behind logo design is, of course, making sure it's functional as a logo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, web designers know all about that, that, you know, if you have some kind of crazy logo with a bunch of different colors, it's really hard to design a website and incorporate that into it. So a functional logo is really so important. Is, is it true that a logo, you, you, you get what you pay for? Yeah, 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 I would agree with that. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of debate about how much a logo should cost. But um, what I found is that you definitely do get what you pay for. You know, ideally, you want somebody who's experienced, really experienced with logo design like how it works as a symbol so Absolutely. that's key so you wouldn't advise to get one on fiverr for instance 
I, you know, you could get one on Fiverr. Just make sure uh, you're paying paying, you know, an appropriate amount of money for it. You know, not don't get a five dollar logo from Fiverr. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> you may be disappointed with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course the other piece of this is uh, like a visual identity guide, right? And so uh, to get an idea of you know, like when I say visual identity and my my design agency, I'm not a designer. And when I built my design agency, I really did it from the perspective of like a business owner mm-hmm. and what I wanted to see and what I was frustrated with in design. And the visual identity guides that we build really kind of address that. And uh, when you get a visual identity guide for your business, I would recommend that they uh, have the following categories. So uh, typically color color theory, but you know, they're oftentimes it's just like, Hey, here's your colors for your brand, but also like, how do they work together? Show me examples, show me the color pairings, then show me what they look like in the wild, you know, cause it's not just like making the background of your website pink. It's also incorporating it into design elements or choosing imagery that matches those, those colors. And imagery is another big one that we recommend. So having a unified vision when it comes to imagery. And that's another big thing about this hacking authority concept is consistency uh, is is a characteristic that is probably very desirable by your customers. They want to make sure that you're consistent and the work you do is consistent and their experience is consistent. So consistent imagery. And by that, I mean stock photography, pictures of people, uh, illustrations, design elements, things like that. So um, would you recommend using actual pictures, pro- proper pictures from your actual, your actual business and people working in your company or use stock images? What well, your, your take on this? Well, here's the thing. Um, it doesn't matter as long as it's professional looking. So if you have, if you're taking your own photography, make sure you hire a photographer, you know, make it look good. Make it so okay. that because yeah, that's what goes back to that confidence thing. You know, if it's like, and I mean, there's a time and a place for cell phone photos, certainly, you know, like the local florist who's posting selfies with a with a flower arrangement is perfectly appropriate for an Instagram feed and things like that. But, uh, you know, when you're talking about designing it into your website and, and creating the, the sections of a website, you know, where it's going to be there, you know, for, for a longer amount of time, definitely use really professional, high quality looking photography. So regardless if it's stock or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then another key element that you want to make sure you have is obviously fonts and typography, um, and ideally an explanation of how they work together, you know, so what is a headline font? What's going to be your sub headline fonts? What's your paragraph text going to look like? Um, you know, and, and a demonstration of that. And then the last thing that we look for, uh, in a visual identity guide is, um, design elements. Okay. So. Some brands have specific like key indicators. You think of them as like key design indicators. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a pattern. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, a specific background style or something along those lines. But these design, graphical design elements that could be included in things like social media posts, web design, obviously, PDF downloads, so on and so forth. And now you have a guide that not only a designer can use to make sure that the visual identity is consistent when they're designing your website, you know, that you as a web designer can use, but also the owner of the company can use uh, if they just need to put something together really quick or whatever it happens to be. So that's the visual identity guide that we recommend that uh, uh, you work with and that you ask for from a graphic design team. Okay. So in, in relation to the font that you mentioned there for the headline and the content, would you use the same font or different fonts? Sometimes it's the same font. So uh, for instance, in our brand, we use Montserrat for everything, mm-hmm. uh, for headline and paragraph text. Um, if the brand, it, it really kind of depends on the brand. You know, we the, the thing that we like to make sure we focus on is readability, obviously, especially for the web. You know, make sure it's clear, easy to read, and that it works well together. And are there, would you download your font, personal font, or purchase it online from specific websites? Or do you have any tips on that? Or? Um, well, so that's another thing is um, whenever possible. Now, logo fonts are something a little different, uh, a typeface for a logo. Um, 
very rarely will we recommend something that you have to go out in the world and find. Really, what we want to do is recommend Google Fonts, ideally, because they're already baked in to most of the web development software out there. They're already baked in the, most of the design software out there, and it just makes your life easier. Well, Google Fonts, they have like a few hundred fonts available now anyway, so plenty to choose from. So you, you reckon Montserrat is an easy one to read? Is that, the, is, is that why you, you picked it? Yeah, Montserrat's an easy one to read. It looks really cool. It's a you know modern looking font, so we like it. Um, and and the word modern, of course, made me think of an, another key aspect here is uh, one of the things that uh, came up in that article I was reading from Medium is this idea that the um, target is always moving on what's attractive, you know, and so. You could have had a very attractive website that was cool and hip and, you know, look really good, but that was 10 years ago and now it looks outdated. And it's something that we all know inherently, but um, especially if you're talking to web design clients who are like really attached to their website and how oh, I spent all this money on this 10 years ago to have this redesigned, you know, and you have to help them understand that, hey, you know, nowadays... It's time to move on, right? Yeah, there's there's new uh, design theories out there when it comes to web design that you might want to incorporate. When you see companies like Google, they had to redesign their logo and everything. They had to do it back, back in 2010, wasn't it? Or 2015. So even giant companies like this, they have to do it from time to time, don't they? So. Yeah, yeah. And Google did just redesign all of their icons and all that. Firefox just redesigned everything. As well. So, yeah. So would you use a font that other people use? Like, for instance, a, a very common font at the moment would be a popular one would be Poppins. Uh, suppose you, you know that one. So you think to, to distinguish yourself and stand out from the crowd, would you use similar fonts or, or not altogether, totally different one? Well, so there's two ways to kind of think about it. Um, typically, we don't, we're, we're not going to shy away from using a similar font to everybody else. That's not going to be the thing that makes you stand out. You know, your content is the thing that's going to make you stand out. Your message is the thing that's going to make you stand out. And and if it's not legible because you decided to use some crazy font that you found somewhere, then that's a whole different thing. You know, we'll use, uh, you know, these kind of like stylized fonts within a design. But when you're talking about like, hey, someone shows up on your website, here's the hero image. What should the font be for that headline? We want it to be something clean, clear and ideally available from Google's font library uh, yes. so that anybody can use it. Yeah, that sounds good, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Fully understand that. Yeah, now, I mean, if you later on, you're going to design like a PDF or something like that for someone to download, now you can mess around with some different font settings or something like that, as long as they match the brand, mm -hmm. you know, because that's going to be embedded in there and your designer could just pass it along without having to worry about passing along a font file as well. Um, so, you know, that's basically the principle of, of hacking authority. It's, it's you know, paying attention to the visual identity of your brand and using good design, good design principles to present yourself as a, an equal to some of your bigger competitors. And would you apply this principle across all different platforms? Like, for instance, if you have a YouTube channel, if you have an Instagram page, a Facebook page and so on, all these banners, would you all have the same layout? And the same colors and the same uh, principle apply to all of them? Yeah, so consistency is really key. Um, and making sure that, first of all, you know, like you said about banners and profile pictures and stuff like that, yeah, that should definitely uh, look the same everywhere you go. Um, but in addition to that, when it comes to something like YouTube in particular, that might mean spending an extra uh, amount of money on a logo indent that matches your brand, which is like the motion graphic of your logo or, you know, an introduction mm -hmm. or even like the motion graphics that are edited into your YouTube video. So it's really, um, uh, you know, kind of ingrained into everything that you're doing. And, I, you know, I was saying the other day to somebody that I'm always really impressed by YouTube channels that that, uh, you know, are just starting out, but they've already, they're, they already feel like an authority. I don't know who they are, maybe, or, or anything about them, but by the production quality of the video, I already kind of trust them because they've already invested in their own video. You know what I mean? And so it lends this uh, ability 
or this feeling of authority and, you know, at least on their part, like commitment, you know, to doing what they're doing. It's true. We, we uh, see that every day, you know, in the comment section of uh, different uh, YouTubers, channels and all that. And they say, I can't believe you have only such and such amount of subscribers, you know, because you, you would think that person has 150K subscribers and they have maybe uh, two or 3,000. Yeah. So, and that's, as you said, it is the brand consistency and you feel like they, they're already on top of their games. Yeah. I, I mean, and the word presence comes to mind, you know, like ha like having an actual and and I don't mean like presence like I'm here, but like you're filling the room, you're commanding attention. You know, like a, a, there's a physical presence. This is amazing. Uh, yes. You see a lot of them online like this on YouTube at the moment. And that's that's outstanding, isn't it? It gives everyone a, a good chance to, to compete against it. The big players in, in the industry, you know, which is very nice. And it's comforting to hear that we can all achieve that nowadays just by applying those principles that you just mentioned, you know? Yeah, exactly. Okay, Ian, so any tips on how we can apply this to web designing? Yeah, so um, I would recommend that you, uh, first of all, are staying in tune with current design trends overall, but web design trends are also a moving target. And, you know, making sure that the website is taking advantage of the the stuff that you see out there, Lottie Animations is one of them, motion graphics, inter interactive uh, web design. You know, these are things that you're seeing a lot. Um, and then also keeping in mind user experience, because design is not just the pictures, design is also designing the experience of the of the user. So, you know, mobile responsiveness, you know, we're, we're in 2021 and I still see websites that are not mobile optimized uh, or could, or could be even better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Hard to believe anyways. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I, I come across these websites every now and then where, where they're not mobile responsive at all. Like I'll try them on my phone and I just can't get it to work. And I, I'll, I'll email the owner. I'll just be like, "Hey, this is terrible. Can we fix this for you? Like, can can we you let us help you?" <laughs> um, but regardless, so so yeah, so having a great user experience that things are where people expect them to be, and that it's interactive and engaging and keeps people's attention. Those are all things that are going to signal to a customer, like, "Hey, this is this is a business that is new, fresh, modern." Uh, that they know what they're doing, that they're engaged with the process. You know, so, so that would, would be my biggest tip. Would you rather for a clinical, clean-looking website or busy enough with a lot of con lots of content? Uh, that really depends on the client. Um, I think that that you can achieve the goals in either case. Um, you know. It, but the client, you know, will, will will signal whether or not, you know, it's it should be real content heavy or, or clean to the point. I, but but there's a tendency, I think, to like design these websites that look like they were made in like 1990. You know, like I, I see a lot in like the medical fields where things are like. I was going to say, or lawyers. Yes, and lawyers. Yes, lawyers do it too, and accountants. These like, um, and it's just like these staunch, you know, and it could be just because of the industry themselves that they feel like they have to have this like very like serious, yeah, serious designs. Um, but even then, you know, like a really talented designer can take a serious design, but make it engaging and interactive. They can make things sliding out and, you know, pins that you could click on and stuff pops up. And that's kind of, that's the cool stuff. You know, that's what people are seeing on the web um, and, and that's what they expect. So any other tips for us today? Um, I would say just to, uh, you know, evaluate, you know, there, there's two levels to this conversation. There's a level of you, your business, how you operate, right? And how you can hack authority by doing it. But then also there's a level of, okay, how can I make this magic happen for my client? And how can I make their, sure that they're set up for success? And one of the things that we do in our business is when we're onboarding our client, we basically take an inventory of what they have and what they don't have. Okay, do they have a logo? Is it in all the right formats? Does it function well as a logo? Do they have a visual identity guide? Do they know what they want to see? You know, like in, in this inventory of, you know, stuff will tell us, okay, do we need to have a conversation with this client about improving their visual identity or do we have enough to get going? You know, and I would say have that conversation too, because 
It'll set you up for success. It'll su- set them up for success. And it could also uh, lead into a conversation about selling them additional services, you know, if it's necessary. So, so is, is your ideal customers, is it small businesses or medium-sized businesses? Or do you deal with all size of business? We tend to deal with both of those. We, there's not a lot. We personally don't deal with a lot of enterprise level uh, clients, but we um, we have solo uh, operators uh, up to, I'd say, 20 to 30 employees, which is still small business for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but that tends to be the range that we're working with. Okay. So these are the type of businesses that would need you most. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, when you when you get into bigger businesses, they can hire in-house teams, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so if you're, I mean, there's still businesses that will hire contractors, but especially like graphic design, they're going to they're going to hire an internal team or, or a, you know, a single designer or something along those lines. So just to make sure for our audience, what are the different uh, areas of business that you cover? So we are a full stack graphic design agency. Um, and so <clears throat> what that means is that we have services that are like a subscription model where you sign up for a monthly subscription, and then you can work directly with a production graphic designer to get your everyday daily designs done. But when it's time for a logo or a visual identity or something along those lines or a standalone design, we can also work with you on that as well. And the service level will go up for that. You know, So now we have a creative director involved and a project manager and maybe a copywriter. So we're really, we consider ourselves a full stack design agency um, that can really do kind of anything you need um, that doesn't move, anything that you need that doesn't move. And we're working on the moving part by, uh, we just brought on a motion graphic artist and video production uh, designer. So, Well, again, thank you very much, Ian. It was a great pleasure to meet you today. And uh, we're all glad to have heard all about uh, this hacking authority concept. So it was very nice to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you go, guys. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed those great tips in the about marketing. I hope you applied it to web design. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. This would greatly help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.